Hi, it's Tony at Cast Esmeralda. Thank you for those who have liked and subscribed. Hit that like button down below. And tonight we're in my kitchen and I made lasagna and I want to tell you on how to make a proper Southern Italian lasagna. Uh, I've been visiting a Catholic nun and she's taught me a lot on how to cook uh, with proper pasta. She makes um, meals for like large weddings, like 200 people, that sort of stuff. So uh, thank you, Nana Maria, in the last year and a half for showing me how to make my own pasta and to make my own pizzas and lasagnas. Uh, I am ever grateful to you. So, um, well, let's just get into this. And then here is uh, my lasagna. And um, it was very good. <clears throat> I really enjoyed it. So just listen up. I will give you the directions on how to make uh, this lasagna because it is a three hour labor of love. Um, first of all, you need to get um, a bag of mixed beans. So any beans will do. And then you get some chickpeas. So a handful of that, of the chickpeas. And then you need to get another good uh, large handful of lentils. So two handfuls of the beans and the lentils and the chickpeas. And you fill a pot up uh, with uh, a little, about a tablespoon or a teaspoon of salt, depending on your desire. And you let the beans cook on a low, basically for a good hour to two, an hour and a half till they get soft. And you wanna soak the beans in the morning too. So uh, first soak the beans and then put the whole entire mixture in the pot and cook that. So uh, when that is ready after an hour and a half, you wanna add your, uh, your pasta lasagna on the bottom but before you do that you want to add a good film layer of olive oil not the extra virgin olive oil because let me get into this there's cooking olive oil and then there's extra virgin olive oil so I never cook with extra virgin olive oil because two things it's a little bit more expensive and I have my own but you can also get this one here and this is, uh, if you ever see this one, it's, uh, it's an olive oil, but it's not extra virgin. <coughs> and this is for cooking. So there's different types of olives, and this is the one they use for cooking. So you want to add a film of that to the bottom of the pan. Because I hear a lot of people, uh, I visit a lot of people, and the lasagna uh, pasta, it sticks to the bottom of the pan, and uh, it doesn't do any good, and it makes the pan, then you have this huge cleanup and everything afterwards, and as you can see here, it never sticks to the bottom of the pan. So add a good film of uh, this cooking olive oil, and then you want to add just a little bit of salt to that then two, and then you put your pastas, so your pasta wafers, which are ones like um, these ones, you make, can make your own. So you make uh, your own pasta, uh, you make your own pasta dough, and you just roll it out very thin, and you leave it in the sun to dry. So I've been fortunate enough to have 25, 28 degrees Celsius. So to prepare your own lasagna, um, this is just a basic flour, lasagna, flour, salt, and water. And you just roll it out very, very thin. 
uh, as thin as possible and then you cut your pieces and you leave it out in the sun and then you put those uh, pasta your pasta lasagna wafers you soak that in the olive oil for at least a half an hour so this is soaking up the olive oil in the bottom of your pan and then as your beans are finishing off they're cooking and everything and they're nice and hot or you you probably took your dog then you leave your beans and you take your dogs out for a walk or something for another hour hour and a half or your goats which I did and just let your beans really soak up a lot of that salty water that starchy water let the beans so you turn your stove off and you let your beans really uh, soak up that water and then when you come back your also your pasta then too has soaked up the olive oil and it's nice and soft already and it just needs a little bit of cooking so you take your beans and then you spread your beans out your bean chickpea mixture as you spread it out evenly on the bottom of the pan and then you have some ready-made tomato sauce which you just add a little film of it to the top of the beans so you just drizzle a little bit of your homemade tomato sauce onto the top of the beans just to give it a little bit of flavor and in your homemade tomato sauce you have everything there the olive oil is there the melanzani whatever vegetables you have and you like and then so you emptied out your pot with your beans and then you go on to cooking you browning your meat so today I used uh, chingali which is a, a, a wild pig and I have them in my backyard and I just leave a little food out and I catch them with my hand behind the bush it's kind of neat to watch so um, you add this grind up the meat uh, uh, today it was ground up chingali pork which is a wild boar wild pig they get the various sizes yes that's just my dog Bruno and then you get uh, so it's already been your meat has already been uh, soaking uh, from the afternoon and uh, some onions and garlic and a little bit of madras curry and some paprika a little bit of paprika there and you add that uh, and you cook it up in your pot or your pan and you add a little bit of water to it just to keep everything moist you don't really want to scorch brown uh, black your meat or anything like that you don't want your meat to dry out and this is the thing with a lot of people they make lasagnas is they, they brown their meat in a pot and they, they really make their meat black and things like that which I've seen and that's a no-no because that will ruin your lasagna so and then you get when your meat is sort of going tender brown you add the melanzani to it the eggplant and add a good one and a half handfuls of eggplant to your meat and then you want uh, that to all cook up nice and just to to soak up that that eggplant to soak up all the meat juices which is really nice and when that's ready and done and cooked uh, then you add uh, your uh, next layer on top of the beans and uh, tomato sauce you add your next layer of your pastas your lasagna wafers which ones are these so you add your next layer and then you add the meat with the melanzani on top of your lasagna wafers and you start a new layer you can brush a little bit of olive oil on there just so the wafers get nice and 
and soft. And then you want to take a bottle of your own homemade tomato sauce, which is ready prepared, and you heat that up. It's only about five, five minutes to heat it up. And you add that, the, the hot sauce, to the top layer of the meat. And a lot of people, they actually make the meat and the tomato sauce together. Uh-uh. What you want to do, so everything kind of doesn't dry out, doesn't get too stiff, doesn't get too hard, is the tomato sauce is always on the top. It's the last thing you want to do. And then that way, your pasta cooks evenly, right? You got to evenly pasta and it's not sticky, it's not dry and things like that. So I hear people say, oh, add a cup of water. No. Add your pasta sauce always on the top layer and then cover that meat and pasta sauce or cover that beans and the pasta sauce with your wafer on top. So this has got to soak up the pasta sauce or it's not going to work properly because there's something about tomatoes and pasta and how it congeals, how it works together in unison. And for thousands of years, pasta and tomato sauce has always worked together. So then you go on to your third layer and you add a little bit, maybe a brush a little layer of olive oil on top and here today I have all veggies from my garden. I have squash, which I harvested over 50 kilos of squash. And I have zucca lunga, and I have a few tomatoes from the greenhouse, which all worked out nice. And I just added that to the top. So I finally chopped some zucca lunga, uh, Langineria gourd, and some pumpkin to uh, some squash to the top here, mix it all nice together in a bowl. Really did nothing, no salt or anything, just put the vegetables on top and then added uh, a good layer of uh, Parmesan cheese and you and some Pecorino cheese. So added a good layer of Grana Padano and some Pecorino and just did that. And you can add, like what I did today, you can add a little bit of cheese actually to each layer. Just give it a little sprinkle and stuff like that to just kick things up a notch. And then you put this in the oven for 30 minutes and you give it a check at 30 minutes. You check the pasta. If the pasta is cooked and done, it probably will be done. But if it is not, the pasta is still a little bit stiff, then you probably want to go to 40 minutes. And in the last five minutes, you just give it another dose of some granite padana and, pe and pecorino cheese. And that will all sort of congeal and go together. So... If you're wondering on uh, how to make a really good lasagna like this one here because you probably can go to a, a top-notch restaurant and you will never ever get a really good lasagna never really get a good lasagna as this one here and this one is about 80% from my garden so um, I'm just gonna end the vid uh, I really like this lasagna today. Um, I will keep this recipe to my heart. So thank you, Nana Maria. Um, thank you for those who liked and subscribed. Hit that like button down below. I hope I've inspired you to go and make your own lasagna like this. Um, this was really good. And I can't eat another piece. As you can see, I ate a lot. But I hope I inspired you to go outside also to plant and grow your own food and to do things on your own. Uh, I wish you all the best and take care and bye for now. I'll see you in the next one.